So I'm uh, Prashant Vaidyanathan. Uh, I work at, at Oxford Biomedica, which is in Oxford, UK. Uh, so I work as the group lead for data architecture. Um, so primarily, I'm basically the data architect for uh, OXB. Uh, so my main role is to make sure that you know all the data that's collected, all the, all the data that, that comes out of different experiments, from different groups, uh, they're standardized, they're, we have a way to store them, retrieve them, uh, make sure that all the users can have access to the data the, the way they want to, and also make sure that we can get value out of that data as well. So that's my primary objective, that's, that's my primary goal. So a lot of folks might have heard about OXB in the context of uh, they're the leaders, the leading cell and gene therapy company. Uh, but I think the best way to describe OXB is as an innovation-led CDMO. So we partner with a lot of uh, big companies, with, with a lot of big pharma as well, to manufacture their products and to you know, manufacture the products based on the platforms that they have. At the same time, we have our own platforms. And I think what really makes OXB a world leader in this is the cell and gene therapy part because we've uh, spent a lot of time understanding uh, the process and we've a lot of innovation there about how we improve our process in general and how we can improve it for our customers as well. We've uh, partnered with Novartis to uh, manufacture the Kimraya therapy which is a life-saving uh, cancer uh, therapy for uh, that, that you know helps uh, with, with patients who are suffering from ALL and other types of leukemia. Um, more recently, we were also uh, involved in manufacturing the, uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine as well. So we've, so we've gone through this process of evaluating SAPIO. So we've seen SAPIO uh, in demos and workshops, uh, but I think it was really great to see end users use, who have been using SAPIO and the glowing recommendations that they've been giving about SAPIO as well. So I think the, the imp interesting thing is, I didn't learn anything alarming or anything negative per se. It's, it was kind of validation of what, what we believed uh, SAPIO as a platform to be. So, and that's, that's absolutely amazing. I think that's, that's really important as well. And I think another important part was, um, you know, there's a lot of new features. So we, we knew SAPIO comes up with new features. Um, Especially when, when we had the demos with Kevin, he would mentioned about how they focus on innovation. They get feedback from their users, um, and we saw a lot of the I, I, I saw a lot of that in, in some of the demos as well, where you know it was based on feedback that they got from customers that was now part of their core platform, and I think that's really interesting because um, you, you do want that you don't want this to be a platform that continuously innovates and 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 you know. At the end of the day, if the users aren't using it, if they don't find value in it, they're not going to use it. So it, it, it seems that SAP really listens to the customers as well. Typically, there, there's, there's many different approaches about how you want to digitize your data. And I think one of the more challenging and complex ones is to have one platform that caters to the needs of all your uh, departments, right? So, because every department is pretty varied in how they actually implement the system, how they actually, you know, um, uh, uh, conduct their assays, the way they collect their data, and the way they analyze their data, it's it's quite different. It's quite disparate. But it's a big challenge to find one platform that can cater to all those needs. So, for us, we actually spent a lot of time evaluating a lot of the uh, uh, platforms in the market and. I think the main reason why we chose SAPIO is because it is true to its name. It is actually a platform. It integrates this core functionality. Because if I'm, a, if I'm a scientist, at the end of the day, if I go to the lab, the limbs and the ELN component are pretty much tied in. They're, they're an integral part. I don't necessarily want to go to a separate system to do my limbs aspect and then have a separate system that does the ELN because they're, they're both tied so closely together. And I think that's one of the main things that we really saw in Sapio that we really appreciated about how tightly integrated those two core functionality is. Uh, but in general, I think we, we, are, we have this approach where we want to have one platform that does all of it. And that's, that's one of the main reasons why we chose Sapio because we're getting the ELN and LIMS modules, we're getting the SDMS modules as well. 
and the other additional charting and uh, you know search and rules engines and those uh, really cool features as well. And I think that's going to play a huge um, huge role in making sure that our data pipelines are in fact end to end to make sure that everything happens in one platform and in one database. So that's that's one of the main reasons why we chose SAPIO as well. So that's actually what we are like like I said we were purchasing all those modules because for us we have very dis different use cases and I think SAPIO is going to cover all of them pretty well. So we have like the the more rigid workflows where you know it's you have to follow a protocol, you have to follow uh, those steps, um, and and there's not a lot of deviation there because that's the nature of those types of assays, but then you also have your blue skies research where you don't want to constrain your scientists to only follow one template. You want to give them that ability to you know, innovate really and at the same time be able to capture that unstructured data in a structured format. So in our experience, Sapio, especially when we were evaluating Sapio as well, it, it covered all these use cases as well. I think it's a bit early to tell, but if I had to guess, I think one thing that's going to be really interesting, and there's a lot of, uh, this is if, if it actually works, I think the voice to text, uh, text uh, dictation is actually really handy, because you, of course, the, there's a lot of caveats here, you know, we're really curious to see how Sapio handles, like let's say a lab that has 10 or 20 people who are all talking, but let's say this is Sol, I think this is a, it's going to have a huge impact because um, at the end of the day, for me, if I'm if I'm a I'm a data I'm a data guy. So for me, I, I just work off out of a laptop. It's very easy for me to just look at a template and say, oh, it's so easy to enter data. But it's very different for the scientists who are actually in the lab, who you know they're wearing their gloves, they they have instruments, they've got their hands full. Literally, they've got their hands full. And for them to try to enter data. Uh, as soon as possible, as much as in real time as possible, that's a challenge. So for me, it's my job to make sure that we make that uh, process as simple as possible for them. And I think the text, uh, the, the voice to text dictation is going to help a lot with that. Because I can imagine where if they're actually conducting an assay and they have some thoughts in their heads that they want to note down, they can just say, okay, you know, create a new text field and then they start talking about their thoughts you can start recording that in Sapio. I think that'll be really, really impressive. So I know I saw a lot of cool things there, like especially the other part was the protocol templates. Um, and this I think uh, is more from a usability point of view, uh, especially when you have so many different assays uh, that you, you want to start standardizing them. So things like protocol templates are also going to have a huge impact. Um, but that's, I think that's, that's more, you know, uh, that's more of an ease of use functionality. But I think the, for me, my, I think one, one thing I'm really looking forward to is the voice to text. I think that's going to have a huge impact. So I think there's two parts here. One is um, the, the typical no code, low code features that SAPI already has, which I think is really useful for, let's say, scientists who want to have access to that data. So that's something that comes out of the box and I think that's really interesting, like even things like the rules engine, for instance. Um, I, I look at it and I, can intu I intuitively know that how much code is going to be required if I had to replicate that functionality by writing, let's say, some Python code or Java code and use the API uh, endpoints to replicate what's actually happening there. But it's really great to see those, those features come out of the box. We've seen a lot of presentations from other clients who really configured Sapio for their use case as well. And there's a lot of uh, programming that's gone into it, software development that's gone into it. I think that's, that's great because um, you know, the, that, that the ability to configure the system internally as well is absolutely amazing. And I'm personally pretty excited for that because I can imagine a lot of workflows where, especially with instrument integration, you do want to have some custom parsers that you know, parse your data and then you put that in the right place in the database and you associate with the right samples. It, it is a complex process and it's not just us. This is a universal problem. And every company, every group, every organization, they have their own bespoke workflows. So the ability to you know, bridge those gaps with um, Python code, for instance, uh, that uses their, the, the plugins and APIs and, and webhooks, I think that's going to be really exciting and interesting.
we are trying to uh, we're trying to re uh, rethink the way we uh, actually handle our workflows because when you have an integrated platform like Sapio, I think there's an opportunity there to really change the way you work and to really make yourselves more efficient and get the most out of your data. Right? So I think that's one part where we are really excited for that. But the most important part is we're actually, you know, I think, uh, especially as we start implementing it, we, we're going to start challenging Sapio on a lot of these things. And uh, one great thing that I've seen is like Sapio seems to live up to those challenges every time. Because I remember even in our evaluations, we, we gave a pretty complex assay and said, you know, this is it's one of our most complex assays and um, Sapio got it configured in a day, which is amazing. So, you know, we, we are going to try to continue pushing those limits and see how much we can do in Sapio. So we're really excited for that. And, you know, one thing that I tell Sapio is that, you know, continue doing what you're doing. It's, it's great to listen to the customers, the end users, and see how they are actually using it and making those improvements. Because uh, ultimately, like I said, if the, the way you, like I can, there, there are probably hundred different ways in which you can configure workflow. So that's, that's the easy part really. The challenging part is to make it in such a way that it's usable for your end users. And that's really where the focus is. Like creating a database is easy. I, I, I've done that so many times, but creating a usable interface that stores your unstructured data in a structured format, that's a challenge. I think Sapio has done a great job there, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to all the new features and you know, everything else that Sapio comes up with.